What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Movie Emporium spoiler filled discussion slash ending explains of Men. The newest film from director Alex Garland. Now before we begin, if you like this video, awesome, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell top to find what's coming next. And if you like the video, awesome, hit that like button as well as commenting below on any video that you watch including this one. So as you can tell, I didn't put any like uh, points where you can like skip ahead for the review, any of those kind of moments, because I want to give you a word of warning. If you're uncomfortable with the anatomies of women and men, uh, I will be talking about that because it's very important to the story. This is a spoiler filled discussion. So if you haven't seen the movie, you may not know what I'm talking about, but please watch the movie first. Um, I just want to give you a word of warning just so you know that uh, I will be talking about things that may be uncomfortable for some people. So with that said, I am doing a spoiler filled discussion and ending explains to this movie men. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. So I gather if you've come here to watch this uh, discussion, you have no idea what happened at the end of this movie. You have no idea what was going on in this movie. I'm gonna do my best to explain what I think is going on. It may not cohesive with what you think or what somebody else may think. It's my personal opinion. Alex Garland and the notes that they give to, you know, people who get to see this early, basically says there are certain scenes that are up to interpretation and have many different interpretations. So I'm giving what I think happens in this movie, which I feel is the is close to what I think Alex Garland was going for because there are some things that line up to what I was thinking about. But I've been mulling about this film for like a week now. I mean, that's how long it's taken to me to kind of get my thoughts on this film. I didn't know how I wanted to progress on this kind of discussion, this spoiler discussion, because this is a movie with a lot of obtuse things going on with inside its storyline making. Um, it's a movie that that is very difficult in some places where it can be interpreted one way or it can be interpreted another way. There's not like a cohesive hold to this movie. And I talked about it in my non-spoiler film review. Alice Garland's one of those people that pushes the boundaries of uh, just difficultness when it comes to filmmaking. I don't mean that as a negative. I mean that is he's trying to push a narrative or trying to push an idea and he does it a very, what I would call Alice Garland way where the storyline, if you ever look at like uh, Annihilation or even Ex Machina, there's a clear narrative or a clear uh, storyline pushing forward, but the ideas that he's being pre that he's presenting to the screen are not necessarily what I would call easy answers, to be fairly honest. And in this movie, you know, we're dealing with Harper, who of course is played by Jesse Buckley. She's an individual that literally you know, is in the middle of an abusive marriage uh, with her husband. Her husband actually uh, basically says he's going to commit suicide if she divorces him, which if you think about it is the overarching narrative to this movie is the idea of abuse the idea of how um, you know if you don't like it or not but how men treat women and the idea that you know it, it could it could reverse the other way but the idea of how individuals that say or do certain things affect the psychology of certain people like the Jesse Buckley Harper character in this movie and how when we see it, it's in the trailer but her husband does commit suicide or it's assumed that he commits suicide it's not exactly 100% whole on like how exactly it happened he, we know as she says in the story that he goes upstairs he tries to climb down the window so on and so forth or so you know quote unquote and then he falls well we don't see, as the movie moves along, we see kind of the fall and the eventual aftermath of the fall. And the reason for that is, is because it's part of the storytelling narrative of men itself. But as we see throughout the narrative, of, especially of the wraparound story of the, the abusive husband, we see that he abuses her. We see that he yells at her. We see that he does the manipulative thing of making her feel guilty about it. And it starts moving all these storytelling pieces and so on and so forth to the point where he eventually does you know, jump out the window or, you know, falls out the window. And we see him in graphic detail, the, the situation at hand. We see what happens in the aftermath. And that really affects Jesse Buckley's Harper character. It's, we pretty much see it with, like, her friend and the Roy Kinnear Jeffrey character. Uh, I'll explain the Jeffrey character in a second. She is under the assumption that it's her fault for or she tries to not believe it but it's pushed the narrative that it's her fault that he committed suicide and it's in a form of abuse in a lot of aspects if you think about it if somebody is very angry and just a drunk or just a very not good human being this goes for men and women because women do have known been known to do the same thing the idea that an individual can do that much damage on the psycho the psychosis of an individual is really prevalent 
Garland and a lot of movies that Alex Garland presents, you know, the idea of Oscar Isaac and Natalie Portman, that whole situation, you know, you see it with Oscar Isaac again in Ex Machina. I'm not saying Oscar Isaac is that person. I'm just saying he's put into those roles where he is really abusive in his own right, how he treats the female robots and stuff like that, how he treats like the Dom Hall Gleason. There's an idea, even in devs, there's an idea about psychology of human beings and how that affects the idea in the world and that is being prevalently played throughout this entire movie and this is kind of a setup and it's not until we get to i mean you can kind of push off a little bit of the what's going on with uh her husband harper's husband husband stuff like that but the minute we go to the, the small village and of course england the one where uh, harper's you know pretty much plays out through the most of the movie she rents out this really nice house which has its own kind of aesthetic you look at like downton abbey or you know 1700s 1800s style uh housing there's a very regal, nice inside which people go in, have parties, enjoy themselves. It's a very beautiful looking house. But on the outside, if you kind of look at it, it's really kind of forceful in how it feels very, um, very dark and very domineering and very just uncomfortable in its aesthetic. It really feels like something that she's being forced to go into instead of living in there and stuff like that. And there's points in this movie where, you know, the Roy Kinnear character who, you know, spoiler alert, because this is spoiler review, plays many different characters in this movie, really finds like, attracted to because she's inside and he kind of wants her and stuff like that. And it really is a, an unsettling view of a location. And I think that's done on purpose. And I read a little bit about it in some of the notes I got, but it, it really feels like a very forceful, very uncomfortable feeling place. It doesn't feel inviting at all. It feels like a very domineering location. And it plays out even more importantly in like in when she walks in the woods, when she walks through that tunnel where she makes a, the, the noise that becomes an eventual song and theme for the movie. You know, the fact that the tunnel feels very... Uh, opening and inviting but there's that one guy at the very end of the tunnel that makes everything go kind of claustrophobic in his nature and the ideas of tunnels and openings and you know how things get pushed through she finds an enclosure finds a closing of a, a building of some sort a building like a closing of part of the stream and those things are running rampant in there you know how how, how the forest feels in, gro in growth and stuff like that and it feels very enclosing and uncomfortable to walk through and like i said she's being chased after by someone and that's when we get to the point where we meet the uh, Roy Kinnear character who plays Jeffrey. But there is something really off about Jeffrey. The way he, you know, because he's the kind of the, the keeper of the house that she's renting from. And he's very kind of what I would call, he acts nice, but he has a very uh, uncomfortable undercurrent to him. Where he kind of, the way he treats her, the way he acts towards her, he may joke about it. But it's some of the, it's those things where, you know, you always hear these stories about women in the workplace or men in the workplace or however you want to look at it where you have somebody that seems nice on the outside but there's something just really sinister about how they act the way they talk the way they present themselves and that is his character in a nutshell but it goes even further than that because as you you may not have realized it in the trailer but as you watch this movie you start to notice that everyone in this village looks like Roy Kinnear from the bartenders to the patrons to the young kid who's a complete a-hole to the uh, priest who bl actually blames her for the death of her husband everything about this is about the abusive nature of the individual so for, for instance all the men who are played by Roy Kinnear Roy Kinnear is absolutely incredible in this movie by the way like, like I said with Jesse Buckley he almost steals the show from this movie but the characters themselves they're all the same they're constantly looking at her they're sneering at her they're belittling her and it all has to be you know, it all boils back to the whole, uh, you know, uh, suicide of her husband and the the nature of how they're treating her. You know, for instance, we see a, a very naked Roy, Roy Kinnear in this movie. We see the genitals. We see everything. And the thing about that is, is it's not meant to be a shock factor, even though it's shocking. You see a naked guy kind of like following and stalking this young woman but it's just the nature of a, a man or like i said a woman I'm, I'm keep going like man or woman because it, it can be kind of the same thing where this man is basically because he's naked and because he's approaching her it feels like he has all this power over her because she's scared of him you know he's very open he's not willing to wear clothes he's a strange weirdo he has you know he starts getting he's like there's some occultist stuff going on with his character you know he puts a cuts open his 
head and puts a leaf in it and stuff like that. And there's a lot of like Christian allegory going on with that, with the tree and the apple and stuff like that. But it also just, it basically boils down to the, each individual character feels like a stereotype, but also feels like a very in your face, trying to show you that individuals that are very mean-spirited and terrible individuals will find a way to put an effect into the psychosis of an individual and it plays throughout this entire movie you see her you see uh, harper's character start to slowly unravel as not only when she sees the naked roy kinnear but when she sees the kid who but wants to play hide and seek and that plays it out later on in a very uh, disturbing effect we see it, like I said, with the patrons and the police officer and how they treat her and stuff like that. It really is about, and like I said, this is what Alex Garland is perfect and great at doing, is just getting to the creepiness and eeriness of the psychology of somebody as an individual and just slowly making them just kind of fall apart at the seams. And it really is a sad thing to watch because it's a powerful storytelling element, but it's just, it's so difficult to just sit here and watch every single persona of Roy Kinnear's character and every different facet that he plays, you know, whether it be the young boy or the priest or something like that, and just see that everybody is terrible, that everybody is messed up, you know? It really really seems like this almost like every character is the psychosis of Jesse Buckley having to deal with the the death of her husband and stuff like that and how he treated her and you can just see that in spades you can see how it plays out every single scene you know like I said when it comes to the Christian allegory there's like a uh, there's a cross that's kind of you know put put onto the side and uh, like I said the priest blames her for the whole situation and you know the idea of the kid wanting to play hide and seek and he calls her many many names which are I won't say on screen but they're really disturbing um um, it really is just a crazy effect. Even when you're watching it, I mean, there were a couple of people in this movie or in this theater I was watching it with. One thought it was boring, which it really isn't a boring movie. It's it's a difficult movie to watch, but they were uncomfortable by, like I said, Roy Kinnear's nudity and stuff like that. And they were uncomfortable. I don't know. I think they were uncomfortable with the fact that it was just a movie that is saying a lot about the nature of human being and his existence, especially in this day and age coming out of the pandemic and how everybody treats each other. And so it really is an interesting psychology, psychosis type of movie. And then we'll get to the ending, which is about 30, 35 minutes long. And it, it, it gets to a point where, unfortunately, th if you want to push forward, I'll, I'll, you know, you can do that. But I'm going to try to explain to it, but it's going to be a little bit graphic. We see, of course, her husband impaled on the fence, the iron cast fence in the, the flat that she lives in England, in uh, London. He's, a, he's impaled upon it. And his arm is one arm is completely severed in half. You know, sorry, it is graphic, but it's completely severed in half. And so, why that's important is when you watch the movie and you know the scene, when she goes back home after you know everything that's happened, we start to see Roy Kinnear's character, it's a different character, start to kind of push on her in her flat and where she where she's living for the moment. And one of them, one of the individuals, I think it's the naked guy, attacks her through the uh, mail slot. You know, the thing you see on Harry Potter, all the, you know, all the whatever, the mail slot. And she takes a knife and she cuts all the way down. It's, it's pretty disgusting, but she cuts all the way down his hand. And so he has like the... Um, I can't, I don't know if it's like a Independence Day or something like that, where they, oh no, it's like Terminator when he like rips his, anyways. So throughout the entire rest of the movie, his hand is like split in two. You watch this and then you start to realize that every character that she starts to uh, come in contact with has this particular issue. And the reason I, uh, reason I'm explaining it is this is what happened to her husband. Her husband's hand was exactly like that. So it starts to become a narrative about not only the, uh, like I said, the psychosis and psychology of everything, but the kind of nature of how everything can become disturbing and how the effects of what we see on TV and the news, the violence and gore that we see really can have a, a massive effect on the world around us. And that's exactly what's happening here in a much smaller scope. But like I said, you know, you have, like I said, the naked Roy Kinnear character finally show back up and like they're attacking her at the house. The Jeffrey character shows up as well and he tries to protect her, but then we realize it's kind of a, you know, a ploy of some sort. And of course the priest Roy Kinnear character attacks her and like I said, just the whole hand and everything. And like once again, blaming her for the whole death of her husband. Well, the thing that I was, I was like having difficult wanting to digest and talk about is the birthing scene. And the birthing scene, this is a uh, not safe for work review, by the way, so be aware, is really vi visceral and disturbing to watch because we see the naked Roy Kinnear character 
And he produces the woman lower parts, the the vaginal vagina area. And sorry, I have to say it. Um, basically what happens is he, this first character gives birth like, you know, as a woman does when they give birth to a child, to another version of the Roy Kinnear character. This time it is the young kid. And this happens, and you see close-up shots of this, this happening for about four or five times. They're coming after, of course, uh, you know, the character that is Harper. Um, and they keep, like, growing a big belly, giving birth, and stuff like that. And eventually it gets to the point right at the very end, when this might really confuse people. I'm sure a lot of people are confused by now. Where the last person to give birth gives birth to her husband, who is now dead. And what's really interesting about this, and what I gathered, like I said, Alex Garland does say that it is up to interpretation, is the idea that this birth is giving birth to another version of a very abusive person it keeps going on and on and on and on like a circle so it's not necessarily that you know jesse buckley is going to give birth to another very you know nasty individual it's just saying this is a cycle of psychological abuse abuse the 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 circle of you know violence abuse and stuff like that it's a rotating circle that never seems to want to end and even though it's showing the birth of it it's just showing the birth of an individual that is constantly in rotation it could be anyone it could be a different person it could be another person it's just showing that nature where it doesn't matter who it is there is going to be something someone or somebody that's always going to be in that circle of abuse and i think that's what's going on i think it's also her trying to comprehend not only what her husband did to her, but how that affects her in the long run. Because at the very end of this movie, once she's killed, she's finally killed off the the husband to try and you know help her. She's sitting on the steps, the stairs, blood all over her. And I think that thing is her trying to reconcile the fact of what she's been gone, she has gone through this whole, whole entire movie. But her friend finally shows up, and I think that's a really telling thing when she, her friend sees her and kind of looks at her funny, which is the simple fact that I don't think this woman's ever going to be healed from the simple fact of what she had to go through and what she saw. Yes, she yelled at her husband to get the hell out of the house, but he eventually killed himself, which, you know, he said that's going to affect her for the rest of, the rest of her life, and you see that through this entire movie. But like I said, you know, there's, there's a lot of other stuff going on in this movie, like with the cell phone, the fact that she can't get a signal, the fact that... You know, she sees like a weird kind of crazy creature. If you see, um, of course, like Event Horizon or something like that, you get like, uh, they'll be trying to communicate with someone and there'll be like this crazy image or whatever. And that happens. And it's just the idea that she can't use her phone because of what her husband did to her with the phone and stuff like that. It's just, there's a lot of that allegory. There's a lot of that, you know, situational awareness when it comes to just how disturbed individuals can be when it comes to an individual, like a, a woman being mistreated by a man or something like that. So I know that's not what people want out of a movie like this, you know, they want to go in with like creep factor and stuff like that. But Alice Garland is a typical, a di very different type of, you know, writer, a very different type of you know, director. He's an individual that has a lot of um, very strong ideas and concepts on what he believes in. And I, that's what happens in this movie. And like I said, there there's so much more allegory that I'm probably even missing in this movie. Just when it comes to the Christian aspect, when, just when it comes to, you know, the idea of like, you know, religion and free will and stuff like that. But for a, what is this movie even about? That's where I kind of come to a conclusion on. It's about abuse. It's about psychology. It's about social uh, worlds, about man and woman or women and man. It's just all those types of things wrapped into a movie that, once again, is not Alex Garland's best film, which is still Ex Machina. But it really does have an interesting kind of concept and representation for what it's trying to do. Once again, this is not going to be a movie that a lot of people are going to like, just on the simple fact of what it does as a visceral aspect when it comes to the, the things he's shooting. Because like I said, that stuff with like the birthing stuff, very, very visceral. It's some of the most uncomfortable stuff you'll see in a movie in quite some time. But I think overall, I just think it's, it's a well done, well shot movie that is has a lot to say and does a pretty nice job with it. I just... I wish it wasn't so what I would call obtuse in a lot of aspects. I wish it wouldn't be what I would call difficult to understand sometimes. But if you get down to nuts and bolts, you really want to learn what kind of what he's doing in this movie. That's just kind of my justification on what this movie is. Once again, it is a movie that has a lot of interpretations. So you might come out with something different. But overall, that's where I come off with it. So 
Anyways, uh, that's it. That's going to be my take or my spoiler discussion ending explains of, of course, men. Uh, I hope that helped a little bit. If not, I apologize. I know you'll let me know in the comments, of course. But anyways, uh, comments below. Let me know what you think overall of this movie. Uh, was there some things that you had when you came out of interpretation of this movie? Is there some things you want to add to it? All the good stuff. But let me know. Anyways, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.